And we are live. The lead attorney, a famous YouTuber, was able to get Little Woody from YSL Court Case on his show. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Let's take a look, because Little Woody has been the star of that court case. It, this is crazy. Let's take a look. On him, don't get smoked. All right, y'all know Lil Woody is about it. Now, here's the thing. If we, as we have talked about so many times, Lil Woody is a witness in this case. And not only is he a witness, he's actually a current witness. He is the current witness. So we need to, we need to avoid asking him any questions about the case. But we can get a general understanding of the man. And little Woody, if you if you hear any questions, again, this is the lead attorney show, so I'm just taking the feed from his live. Take a look. Um. Oh, by the way, this is Noel battling MS. If you're tuning in, verbal on life. Hopefully, you like this stream and I could get you like. If you could give me a like, I appreciate it. Basically, Woody, or as Kayla says. Woody, right? Well, oh, Woody, we got our man here. Let's add him. All right, we got Lord Woody in the damn chat. How is it going, Pimp? Can you hear me okay? Jackie. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming up. First of all, uh, let everybody know what your Instagram is, what your YouTube is, what your Cash App is. I don't know if you can write your Cash App in the chat or if you can... If you can say it and one of the moms will write it in there for you. Where, where can where can people find you and support you? Um my Instagram is Woody versus Woody. Mm -hmm. w -O -O Woody versus Woody. Mm -hmm. w O O D Y. Okay. My YouTube is Lil Woody 372. 372 on the numbers. It don't mean nothing else. Okay. <laughs> my cash up is two L. B R O C K. Okay, let me. I'm gonna write that down. Let me write that down and, and pin it. If y'all want to support Lil Woody, Woody's Cash App. All right, say it again for me, brother. Two dollar sign. Two. Uh huh. F. F. B R O C K. B R O C K. Two F B R O C K. Yes. Okay, that's Lil Woody's Cash App. If y'all want to support him, I'm gonna pin it to the top. Uh, he's just a black man like all of us trying to make a way, man. So, um, thank you so much for that. Now, again, I don't know if you heard it, but I announced to everybody that we are going to stay away from any questions about the case. Just kind of try to figure out kind of who you are as a man. And, uh, maybe after your portion of the testimony is over and you're free to talk about whatever you want, maybe you'll come back at some later point. But as of right now, we're just going to focus on more of the general aspects, right? Now, where where are you from? A little, are you are you from here? Are you from Atlanta? No, no, I'm from Mechanicsville. You from? Okay, okay. Well, all right. You're exactly right, Mechanicsville, but that's that's part of Georgia, right? I think so. <laughs> you don't know if you're from Georgia, Woody? I, I, I I'm only from Mechanicsville. Yeah. Is Mechanicsville in Zone Three? I think so. And zone three is in Georgia. Lil Woody, you don't know what state you were born in, Pimp? I'm from yeah, I'm from Atlanta. All right, Lil, we, we kind of starting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> All right, we kind of started off on the wrong foot, Pimp. I don't, you know, I'm trying I don't like, I don't like nothing about Georgia. You don't like nothing about Georgia. <laughs> no. What's wrong with Georgia? Uh, they won't let me leave. Well, now let's talk about that because you have and I get it, I get it, I get it. Um, y'all see the corruption that's down here. Y'all see the corruption that that little Woody has been under, and there's probably even way more corruption that y'all haven't seen that Woody has experienced. They ain't gonna so, let me tell that. Of uh, the other parts? Yeah, I've I been to jail for jaywalk. I mean, I've been jail for walking down the street, and they charged me for uh, driving with suspended license, and I walked. Wow, <laughs> they charged you for suspended license. You were walking. My Lord. last my last arrest when I got locked up in 2021, mm -hmm. I was walking in Atlanta Station, mm -hmm. and police put up on me a hundred deep. Threw me on the ground, tased me in my face, pulled my shoulder out of place, didn't even take me to the hospital. And then they told me I was, I'm going to jail for driving with suspended license, reckless driving, and uh, uh, carrying a uh, concealed, I mean, carrying a uh, convicted defendant by firearm. And you were just walking? Yeah, I went viral on, on social media back in 2021. Crazy. And I, everybody see me laying on the ground. They went. They had to go find a car. 
Wow. Yeah, man. Wow. They so, tell me with possession of a firearm that they found in the car that was somewhere else. So you ain't even have it on you? Nope. They, they said it was in the it was in the back seat, and the police said I was the driver, and they still charged me and made me plead guilty to it. And oh, see, now you're really talking because a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, you should never plead to anything. But defendants and criminal defense attorneys, attorneys, we all know so many times, guys, it's in your best, and this is gonna sound bad. But so many times it can be in your best interest to plead to something as opposed to go to trial. Because if you go to trial and lose, the time that they're going to try to stick you with is insanity. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Pip? Oh, <laughs> he dropped off. But uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll click back on. But we don't even want to talk about that. So many times, guys, the millions of men in this country that have had to plead out to stuff that they didn't do. And it happens. All right. So little Woody is gone. For a little bit. Let's see if we can get him back in the show. I just want to see Little Woody, man, because the man is a, a walking legend. Let me just go fast forward here through the show. Oh, here we go. He's back. Or you can plead for 30 days, pay your attorney 3000 go in and get out. Which would you do? Right? So when Woody says, man, I'm pleading out for shit that I, I ain't even do. I mean, that's real shit. And it, it, it's the corruption by the prosecutors. We got our man, uh, we got our man Woody back. But yeah, Woody, like you know so much about the corruption of yeah. the system that people don't get to see on a daily basis. And, and I mean, let's be fair, it's because you had so many interactions with the police and the courts. Is that right? Right. So what it did was they targeted me. Mm. I've been in jail for shoplifting and I ain't never been in Henry County a day in my life. Uh, they got you in Henry County for shoplifting? 2015. I was out on um, 2014, actually. I ran four wheels and police caught me. Said I had a want to Henry County for shoplifting. I'm like, shoplifting, that ain't my motto. <laughs> motto. <laughs> yeah, I ain't stealing out no store. They said I was stealing ink cartridges. I'm like, I didn't know what that was. Right, I was like, ink cartridges? Y'all gonna try to put some ink cartridges on with it? Come on now. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It was so crazy because when I went when I went to court, I explained to the lady, like, I had never even been in this county. It was mm -hmm. so far away, I thought it was another state. Right. She was like, uh, well, they know it wasn't you, but it's a process you gotta go through. But they offer you abandonment and 10 year probation. But if I was in jail, I would have took it but by me being on the street. I'm like, I ain't taking that. Right. So I had missed court because they keep like Henry County different for Fulton. They mm -hmm. keep one piece of paper with all your court dates on there. And I, I, I throw the paper away when I first got out. So I missed court. They put an LTA on me. Mm -mm. So, you know, when they catch me again, the lady, no, I called they like, hey, I missed court. I didn't know I had court, but I asked you and you told me I ain't had to go. So she's like, well, turn yourself in. So, you know, the, the, people, people be talking, they don't understand like the, the power that these people hold. And if they really feel as in you valuable, uh, you're a certain individual, they can do whatever they want to do to you. Like, uh -huh. everybody want to talk, and you don't know. Like, I don't been in jail for driving without license. I had my learners in my hand. Wow. And, it was, and it was like 3.30 in the afternoon. Crazy. The police told me his supervisor told him he had to lock me up. Like, this is ain't going thing. That's crazy. why I have so many uh, criminal history. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's start with that. You know, when did you start kind of, I don't want to say, you know, this, with the street life type of thing, but when did you start having interactions with the police? How old were you? I was 18. I lost my mom. Like my mom died in 2008, mm -hmm. and my first time going to jail was 2009. Okay, so somewhere around when your mama passed, you started you started um, kind of turning a little bit. Your life started changing. You started having these interactions with the cops. Yeah, basically. Okay. I, I, I'm not gonna say like I was innocent. Like I just didn't care. I didn't care no more. Like it was it was what it was. Yeah, and you know, you say you're from Me Mechanicsville. Can you explain to the people like how Mechanicsville is? What's what's the atmosphere? Is it like high income or is it lower income? It's low income. It's a it's a community full of a lot of a lot of people with nothing better to do. Mm. So it's like we don't have we don't have people in the community. We have we have some that try, but these are people that's from the community they try. We don't have people that try to inspire us to be better, uh, to motivate us to do different. So, you know, they're like every other neighborhood in Atlanta. Um uh, we adapt to our environment. Right, right. And you mentioned your mother. Did you grow up with your father too, or he wasn't really around? Um, um I before my father died, I was staying in Born Homes. That's like on the west side of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. He he passed away in 2001. Um uh, he died from cancer, but he also the, the moment he died, I don't know if he died from the cancer, but they had a car wreck and he mm -hmm. flew out the window, so he was pronounced dead on the scene. Whoa. Okay, that was, that was in 2001. 2001. And then, you know, years later, 2008, I think you mentioned when your when your mama passed. Yeah, she died in 2008. So you were around, what, 18 at that time? And you were just, you didn't have any kind of parental support there after that? Well, actually, I, I, I removed myself from my family. Like, I, was, I just took to the streets. Mm -hmm. When my mom died, it was like, I didn't have, I, was, I felt alone in this world. So I just I just went to the streets and 
start hanging with people and start feeling like they were my family and just start, you know, embracing them as they was my family. Right, right. And were you able to finish high school or that, that really didn't pan out? You won't even believe me, man. My first, my mama died. She died 2008. I went back to school on the first day back after summer. And it, as soon as I walked through the door, they took me in the office and told me that I've been um, expelled. Really? What grade, day back. what grade was that? Uh, So it was like the... Uh, like 10th grade, 11th yeah, grade, 12th grade, somewhere around there? Yeah. So you were expelled. So after that, maybe like 10th grade, you didn't, you weren't able to, to finish. You weren't able to go back. Yeah, I didn't care for school anyway, though, because it was just like, I was just going because my mama. I would not mean so when she died, I was like, well, y'all didn't get, y'all keep them papers on either. Right. And so then what were you doing in 10th, 11th grade? You know, what was your life like uh, if you weren't going to school? Oh, well, when I was going to school, I was acting a fool. You know what I mean? So, but it was different though, like, because I had my mama. So I really wasn't trying to, you know, go too far. But I, I was smart in my class. Um, I was in society. I, I was smart. Uh, I used to participate in a lot of the work. Because once I got in high school, I got them taking out special classes because I wasn't going I wasn't taking special classes in high school. I was tired of that. Okay, so you were taking like a special education classes in elementary school? Elementary and middle school. Elementary and middle school. And then when you got to high school, you decided the special classes really weren't, they weren't for you anymore. So I take a special classes because I have a hearing problem. Okay. So I um, they, they were teaching me how to, I, I, I know how to do sign language. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. So, uh, it was just a precaution just in case I might lose the hearing in my other ear. Mm-hmm. So as, as I learned it, I was like, it's no point for me. Like, I'm not going to be taking any class teaching. I'm in high school. They teach me elementary school work. Right. So, it can kind of be almost degrading or like insulting, right, to, to a certain extent. Right. I feel you. So then um, you got out of those classes and you decided, your mother passed, and you decided that, you know, really the only reason you were going to school was because your mother was kind of pressuring you to do that. And when she was gone, you decided to just really take yourself out of out of, out of the, the schooling environment. And so, so when I was going to school, mm -hmm. just, when I was going to school, I just get picked on by the people that, like, who knew me because they'd be like, oh, you in slow class. I didn't like it. Right. So I just tell my mom all the time, like, I'm not going back to them class. So I just, I, I just get picked on by, so I, it did something to me. So I just go to class and, and pick on the people in the class. I just beat them up and do little <laughs> evil things to them because, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know any better. Right. So when people did something to me, I, it created, it created anger in me. Mm. And, and you, I mean, even your name, like Lil Woody, right? I can see how people might want to pick on you. How tall are you? Five, six. Five, six. Okay. So yeah, maybe sometimes the, the, the smaller dude. I know, I know, ain't nobody picking on me no more. Though. Okay, they really. Yeah. <laughs> Your boy strapped up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we saw that. We saw that. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't taking no slice. We absolutely saw that. You were real with it. That's that's for damn sure. And so um, after you took yourself out of high school, kind of eleventh uh, grade, tenth grade, like what what were you doing on a daily basis if you weren't going to school? You were just kind of out in the streets. Yes, yeah, so I had I had I, my best friend. Um, his name DB. Mm -hmm. Man, him just kicking a lot. He was a fly dude. Like he wanted to be. Like shoot dice and talk to girls. Mm -hmm. Me and him just keep it, you know, on a daily basis every day and just spend time with each other. And one day, you know, he ended up getting killed. Yeah. So when you know, I was in my feelings about something that I shouldn't have been in my feelings about. And I got mad at them and didn't let them go with us. And he went somewhere else. And you know, that was the end of that. That was well, not the end of that, but this, you know, he lost his life. So I blame myself all these years because I, I feel like if I would let him get in the car, he would have still been here. And I wasn't mad with him. I was mad with my other friend, but he didn't pick a side. So I'm like, well, you ain't picking a side. It is you picking a side. So you with him, you stay with him. And I don't do that no more. So now it's just like, yeah, it, it, just, it just took me down another path. Okay, so you had a best friend, and there was another dude that, that you were having a disagreement with. It was, it was my cousin. I, was, I had a disagreement with my cousin. We all hang together. Mm -hmm. And I did something that I shouldn't have did, but I did it for you know good purposes. And my cousin was like, bro, you wrong, bro. Don't do that. Like, man, I brought this person out here. And I was like, well, he better take this money. If he don't get this money, he ain't going to get nothing. Anyway, the dude, like, he didn't want the money. So long story short, my cousin went act like he wanted to defend him. And I told my cousin, well, you want to defend him, you can get his treatment. And, you know, me and my cousin fell out. And, you know, the people like, he didn't want anything to do with it. He ain't picking my side. He ain't picking his side. And me, I was an angry bird. So I was like, well, you did just pick your side. And I let him and my cousin. I told him they couldn't ride with us, and they went. They went to another neighborhood, and he ended up being killed. That's how they went. Mm. And then you ended up blaming yourself for not. I mean, and no one could. Uh -huh. I, ended up could... Going, I ended up going through that neighborhood every day. Really? Yeah, I went through that every day. Mm. Did they ever yeah. find the people that that killed him? No, nah, they didn't care. They said it was gang related. Mm. Um, and that's you know, another. They, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, they they were too busy trying to figure out what I knew. Cause whatever leads that they were getting, they was already getting rumors that I had already been through there. Mm. 
Yeah. And and this is another thing, too, talking about the corruption. You know, sometimes police officers are very interested in solving a case, and then sometimes they're not interested at all, right? And if they, yeah, and if they, if they yeah. label something, oh, it's gang-related, oh, if it's this or that, if they you want really just, if you If you want justice for your people, if something happens to your people, just go tear the seat up. They're going to mm. make them investigate then. <laughs> when, when the streets get hot, huh? That's mm. when they're going to start looking. Yeah. Okay, so that was in your early teens, or that was in your late teens, and then in your 20s. How old are you now? 30, I'm 32, I think. Thirty-two. Okay. Yeah, I'm born in 91. Okay. So then in your in your early 20s, you were having more interactions with the cops, or, or kind of what was going on in your early 20s? In my early 20s, I was in the feds. The feds? Okay, what happened to land you in the feds? Well, my name's at the top of the police radar. Uh, people was calling police on me every day. Everywhere I went, they was telling police I was doing this, I was doing that. And All right, well, let, let's stop right there. Because when you say that your name is at the top of the police radar, like, how did it get there? Because usually, you know, you have to, there's a reason why why cops start to focus on you, right? How did, how did your name get so hot in the streets where cops were, were, were hearing about you? Well, let's just say, uh, if you don't bother me, I don't bother you. Mm-hmm. And uh, they listen to music. Uh, so many people like didn't, didn't like me, and they feel like the best way to get rid of me was to put the police on me. So it was it was a lot. It was a lot of people just calling in saying I was doing this and doing that. And a lot of stuff I was doing, I don't care. I'm not ashamed of it. Like, there's a phrase I had to go through in life, and I pray nobody ever get me back in their mindset, but it is what it is. Gotcha. He's 32. So you were you were doing some things, and people weren't liking it, and people were reporting you to the police. You started to develop a, re- a reputation with the police. Is that right? Well, actually, I already had a reputation, but not with the police. I had a reputation in the street. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I started, like, you know, taking on certain path in life, then he go, he go, here they go. You see him? They, everywhere I go, they right there. I spit on the ground, they right there, like. The police? Yeah, they, they right there. So even recently, like, when I, the last time I just got a um, release, I went to court, Judge Cross, I mean, what's her name? Rachel, the one mm-hmm. who they tried. Cro- she was my judge. She... When I walked in her courtroom, they violated my rights. It wait, wait, so, like- so yeah, let me let me just back up here. You know, Judge Glanville uh, was was the judge on this whole Young Thug case, and then Brian Steele. We've read all these motions, guys. Everybody's trying to get Brian Steele off the case. I'm not Brian Steele. Everybody's trying to get Judge Glanville off the case, and so now this case has been assigned to Judge Cross. And what you're saying is. Judge Cross was a was the judge in one of your in your most recent criminal case. Apart from the last one, I just got out of. Mm-hmm. What was that about? Um, when I got locked up in the land station, they tried, they put a fire on, they put a gun on me. Oh, that one. Okay. And so Judge Cross was the uh, the judge for that. Yeah, I never seen this judge before. I never heard of her. It was my first time going to friend her, and she's like, "I know who you is." Really? And I'm like, "How you know who I am?" So I don't know what type of story they got of me on there in that courthouse when mm-hmm. my lawyer Melanie, he came through he got me that bun mm-hmm. and the prosecutor they tried everything in the power to get them to deny my bun because they really were holding me in jail mm. they wouldn't let me out so they like he's a he's a a, a, a game member he this he did the judge like well y'all didn't do y'all part i gotta get him a bun so like well can you give him house arrest can you give him curfew the judge like no it's just a possession charge it's, it's not it's not this serious so why wouldn't she give me a thirty thousand dollar bond and I get back to the jail? Um, I can't. It's certain stuff I can't say, so I had to leave out. Yeah. But it took me two weeks to get out of jail. So wow. me and Melanie going back and forth. Melanie tell me that well somehow the state went to the judge and now they ordered me an ankle monitor and abandoned me from zone three and banned me from um on bankhead. So. When I first got out of jail, I and I'm in jail two weeks after I got a bond. They didn't put it in the system. Mm-hmm. Jesus. So two weeks now. So I'm telling Melanie, like, bro, look, I'm losing my mind in here. Get ankle monitor, bro. I ain't tripping, bro. I ain't, I ain't tripping. Get ankle monitor. So Melanie, like, you sure? So finally, I, I got in, you know, putting the pressure on Melanie to sign off for it because I was tired of sitting in jail. They get, they put me on house arrest, 
I mean, they put, yeah, they put me on the house ankle monitor mm-hmm. and told me I couldn't go nowhere within zone three. Uh, I can't go on bank here. I can't talk to nobody that affiliated with any gang, specifically certain gangs. Take pictures of none of it. So this what this what they did to me. I tricked them when I got out of jail. They mm-hmm. thought I was gonna be stupid and go back and violate my conditions so they could lock me back up. I stayed in the house. Mm. I stayed in the house. I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't go around nobody. Nothing. So mm. after like three months, they realized I wasn't gonna fall for it. They gave me a court date and told me that. I could be guilty to this charge. I'm like, well, I'm playing guilty to a, 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 a charge that I didn't have. They're Money. like, well, this is the only way you can get off the anchor months. <laughs> Jesus. And guys, listen, Georgia is really good for some reason about banishments. And a lot of times, especially in these rural counties that are white and they don't want your black ass in there, if they catch you in there, they will make a part of your sentence that you are banished from the county. That means that you can never you can never go back. It's crazy. And if any police officer sees you within the county, they can arrest you, right? Because you were in violation of your plea agreement because you agreed to be banished from the county. And so, so, mm-hmm. I mean, cut you out, but you know the worst part about it? Hmm. That's why they gave me the ankle monitor. Oh, they gave you the ankle monitor to track your location to see if you violated that. No, they gave it to me because they, they just believed they knew I was gonna violate it. Yeah, but, they know you're gonna be up there on bank head, huh? <laughs> but they gave it to me because they said uh, APD is afraid of me. They don't want me on the street. They don't want me in Atlanta. And um I'm I'm public enemy number one to them. And so I'm hearing this from the state. Jesus. I'm not hearing this from my lawyer. I'm hearing this from the DA's mouth. I'm hearing this from the courts, like some like APD. Whoa! And I, once I'm hearing this, I'm like, I ain't, I ain't never been a threat to the Atlanta police. Right. Only, only thing I ever did was ran from them. Like I ain't know, you know. Well, I can't say that, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I, you know, it, it shouldn't be. Whatever you've done shouldn't rise to the level of scrutiny to, of attention that you're getting from them. Like you're getting way too much heat. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like and they 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 had they had I seen like I was somewhere the other day and they saw me and you know what they did? Hmm. They put up like 10 cars and just sat there and just watched me. Jesus. So I pull out my phone and start recording them like okay, they about to harass me, y'all. I don't run from them no more. I ain't, I don't, I'm not intimidated by them no more. Like I don't bother them. I ain't I ain't break no laws or nothing. Mm-hmm. I just I just ask them to leave me alone. I'm just trying to live my life. Live your life 100 percent This guy's oh, we famous. lost him again. Um, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you can still hear me, but you mentioned that uh you went to the to Fez. Woody, are you there? Little Woody is super famous. I see him trying to <laughs> click it all the buttons. Oh, he dropped off. He dropped off. He will probably uh he'll probably link back uh come back in in about 20 seconds. As we are waiting for him, let me uh, shout out some people in the chat. Again, big shout out to Ollie. Ollie the the McCall, all right, who is the the stream sponsor, sponsoring this uh, stream here that we got with, um, that we got with uh, AV. AV had to step out. She had a consultation to go to, but she will be right back once her consultation is over. And uh, Woody, we got Woody here too as well. And Woody's talking to us a little bit about his life. I saw him in the back, but he just uh, clicked off again. I think he's having some technical problems. When he comes right back, we will pull him back up. Shout out to Lisa. The beautiful Lisa has become a new member. Thank you. Hear me? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you had did so fast. Oh, I bet. All right. So um, you had mentioned that there was an incident with the uh, at the re- recreational center with the machine gun. The cops got you for that. Did you end up taking that to trial or you ended up pleading that? Well, I was going to trial for it. Mm-hmm. So I had to fight two, I had to fight two federal defenders. Jesus. The first federal defender, federal defender came. He was like, oh man, this case is bull. It's trash. We're going to beat it. Mm-hmm. Everything the cops did was illegal, whatever. So the secretary came to see me. He was like, they want to, they want to talk with you. They want you to cooperate. So I said, what is cooperating? He said, I don't know, they want they want information. I said, Well, I don't know nothing about no information. Like I told him off the real, like I'm a liar, you feel me? Like, 
So he was like, well, they believe you got some valuable information. Long story short, I told him I don't know nothing. This boy behind my back and went to set up a profit. Mm. So I got a court day. I go down there and I see all the police that locked me up. Instantly, I get mad. I'm like, these people locked me up. What this is? So, so he was like, remember, I was said, I said, no, 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 no. You you can't come and agree to me that. So he tricked me and told me that if I sign, if I agree to the profit, I get I get my charges dismissed because they violated, and he gonna point out all the facts. Mm -hmm. But the profit really was a meeting with the, and all the investigators and stuff. So I made him get an argument in front of them. I told him he fired. So I went hey, back right. to the so, jail. So your your initial attorney, and when you say a federal defender, this is someone that the state gave you the the state gave you to represent you, right? In no, your this federal case, the United States gave me. The United States. Yeah, uh, you gotta be specific when you talk about federal. Okay. So the 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 federal government, because it's a federal case, assigned you a federal public defender. Is that right. correct? Okay. And the federal public defender entered in and you know started talking immediately that this case was BS and you could beat it and it's not. But the federal defender wanted you to cooperate. Right. This and, is everything he kept saying. So now it's like it's me and I'm in the feds. So I'm like. I, I never think I'd be in the feds. I didn't even believe the feds were real at this time. Mm -hmm. so, and how old were you? Do you remember? Were you in your early 20s? When yeah, you I was in my early 20s. Okay. Like and in 2015, I was like, yeah, I was in like 22, 21, something like that. You were young. Yeah. Okay. And then your attorney said, you know, he's going to get you off. But then you got pulled over in, into a room and you saw all of these uh, investigators and these police and they wanted you to make a proffer. Can you explain to the people a little bit about what a proffer is or what they wanted you to do? Okay, they wanted information. They was like, um, when I walked in, they were laughing and stuff. So when I looked, I was like, I look, I'm like, what? I thought I was tripping. So my lawyer walked in with the with the with the uh, U.S. attorney. Mm. So I'm like, what this here? So everybody stopped laughing when they heard him say, what this here? Um, he he be like she's like you need a moment with your client. He he be like yeah they walked out, and then me and him was in the room. So I'm like what this here? These the police that locked me up. He said yeah you just I said no you told me that we were gonna go in front of the judge and explain it. because the evidence in my case the video was tampered with. Mm -hmm. The video from the gym, it was jumping and skipping, and they mm -hmm. thought I didn't know no better. They thought I was stupid. So I pointed out to the lawyer that they tampered with the evidence. This is a dismissal. Mm -hmm. Uh. And he didn't like it. So anyway, he used that to trick me to go. So we was in our argument. He like, if you get them whatever information they want to know, they can sweep this case under the rug. I, like, I don't have any information. Long story short, uh, the, the prosecutor came back in. They came back in. And they said, hey, Miss Kobe, you ready to talk? I said, we ain't got nothing to talk about. So mm. he, he really tried to convince me to talk to them. So I'm like, I don't got nothing to talk about. I lied. You know, I, mean, I made this stuff up. And you see what it got me to. It got me in the feds. So anyway, um. So that was your first attorney. Yeah, that was my, his name Robert Matt. <laughs> okay, you pointing him out now. Pointing yeah, him his out. name Robert Matt. He's a superior, he's a judge right now. I think in Clay County. Oh really? He does yeah, have Clay County. Guy. Wow. Yeah, that's I, crazy. I seen, I seen him fly you on the side of the road, but I, I had to leave because I I didn't want to you know damage you, and they tried to lock me up for it, so I just left. But Ain't that was my company. first attorney, Robert Matt. And then my second attorney. Was, hey, let me just jump in to highlight this, guys. The the attorney, the federal attorney that Woody had that tricked him, that tried to trick him, that tried to go in behind his back, pure corruption, is now a judge down here. Is now a judge. Y'all see how deep seated this corruption down here can be. So that was your first attorney on that case. And then so you fired him, you told him you fired, and then you got another oh, one. Right? I had to lie on him. Hmm. I had to lie on him. He wouldn't get off my case. Really? Yeah. I had I said something that was very inappropriate. And no, I'm lying. That's the second. So I fired two lawyers. The second lawyer I lied on. Okay. What happened with the second lawyer? Okay. The second lawyer, our first time meeting, he came. He said, I read the letter what you said about last turn. You don't have to have trust issues with me. Mm -hmm. He said, but first thing first, let's get it out of the way. Did you do this to such and such? And instantly, right then, that I knew it was a problem with him. So I'm like, bro, I'm locked up for a possession of a firearm. We ain't gonna talk about nothing they, that they ain't charged with. Mm -hmm. So I had somebody, I can't say too much, but I had somebody I used to talk to 
And that person was very intelligent when it came to law. And I used to have him in my ear, so he used to teach me how to case study. He used to teach me how to understand things. I had him to write letters to the judge on my behalf as he me to fire these attorneys. Mm. And I was explaining to him what he was doing, and he didn't like it. So long story short, the second attorney, I point out all the things that he was doing wrong. I beat the case. I really beat my federal case. But it's due to the fact the lawyer was smarter than me. So he'll argue this point right here and let this point slide through so that they can have me. Mm. So I wrote one lawyer trying to fire him, but the, when I was trying to fire him, I said, I don't trust my attorney. I feel like he is working with the, the U.S. attorney office, and he's trying to help the police about cases and charges that I don't got pending. And every time he come visit me, he talk, he talk about cooperating. So the judge was like, well, that's not enough to find my attorney. And my attorney was like, well, young, I want to continue working on his case. So I'm telling the judge, like, how are you going to still represent me after I say all this about him? I'm not going to be happy to have a fair trial. Another year go by, they made me keep him. Another year go by. Crazy. Were you locked up the whole time or did you have a bond? I stayed in jail. I stayed in the feds 40 months before I was sentenced. Damn. Yeah. Because I constantly kept writing the letters to the judge trying to find my attorneys. Mm -hmm. So the second attorney, which his name is Bill Thomas or William Thomas, another black guy. Once he got on my case, one day he came and told me I've been charged with murder. So I'm like, how, how am I been charged with murder? He said, well, some people pointed me out, said I did. He said, it's, it's BS. Uh, don't worry about it. He going to represent me on that. I said, no, you ain't going to represent me on that. <laughs> was this a separate case or was this related to the recreational center? It was a whole deaf separate incident. It is the case that other people are facing. It, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, he said, no, you ain't. It's a case that's open right now. Okay. Ain't so, no, ain't. <laughs> he was like, he going to defend me on it. And I like, no, no, you ain't. So long story short. <laughs> Um, he constantly kept saying cooperate, so I kept writing down little things that he was doing, mm -hmm. and I was pointing out facts in my case where I could have beaded it, and he kept talking about cooperate and this and that. So after the judge denied me the first time, I had to build a stronger case against him, and I did. During my motion to suppress evidence, I was explaining um, that the video was tampered with. Uh, I was detained before that the police saw that any illegal activity had. Um, um, happened. So when they came in, I was playing basketball with my shirt off. You don't see me with no weapon on me. I didn't match the description because they said a person had on a white shirt and blue jeans. So the police said he detained me because you know he knew me to be gang affiliated and his senses are heightened when he see me. Jesus. So he detained me before he knew it was a weapon in that bag. So the police just started lying. They started saying that um. I request you speak to the gang unit. Why do I want to request you speak to somebody who got it out for me? Right. So they, they start making their arguments off lies. And I'm telling my lawyer, like, they lying. Why would I request you speak to these people? They the ones trying to lock me up. Long story short, the lawyer, he just got he got me to that point. So I went to court. I told the judge I had this person to write this letter for, on my behalf. And he, he, he did it so good. The judge called me to court like a week later. Wow. We, we got in front of the judge. She said, you can talk freely. So the judge's name is Amy Totenberg. Mm -hmm. She's the best person in the world. Mm. She um she said, you can talk, Mr. Kobe. I said, Your Honor, this man here been coming to me about cooperating about something I don't know nothing about. I said, uh, he, he come ask me about murder charges that I don't know nothing about. And then she was like, okay, Mr. Kobe, but those ain't re reasons to fire your attorney. I said, well, one day he came and saw me and he rubbed against my behind. Oh, yeah, all right. Here we go. You were trying to get that man off that case, huh? <laughs> so the lawyer looked at me. He looked at me and like, what? So he was so mad that I told the judge that. <laughs> me and him arguing in front of the judge. So she like, he could talk. So he tell the judge, I'm a liar. All I do is lie with him, with him. <laughs> so the judge take her glasses off. She like, Mr. Coleman, are you serious? I said, Your Honor, I don't want to press charges against him. I forgive him. I paid about it. <laughs> I forgive him, judge. I should have paid charges against him. <laughs> but I, I said it, you know, you know, we argue. I told the judge, you just need this much brain to defend me on this, to represent me on this case. I said, he don't have any. Uh, the, the video is tampered with. He arguing that I did not abandon the bag by leaving it on the side. Instead uh -huh. of the fact that I was detained and placed under arrest 
before the police even knew it was a gun in the bag. That's when my constitutional rights was violated. So the judge was like, yeah, I, I have an issue with that too. So she was like, yeah. So she basically started agreeing with me. Don't you know that this, this attorney had a nerve to have another attorney come? So we're like, who this dude is in the back? Because this is a private, uh, it was a, a seal uh, hearing. Mm -hmm. So the, my, the attorney, William Thomas, was like, well, he had him to come just in case the judge removed him off the case. That him and this attorney been working closely on my case. So I'm like, well, you know, I ain't never knew nothing about this dude working with my case, and I didn't give him permission for that. Right. And if I have issues with him, I don't want him representing me either because they are both trying to help, trying to make me uh, cooperate with this U.S. attorney. Mm -hmm. So the judge like, yeah, she like, I have an issue with that because she decide who going who my case gonna go to. Mm -hmm. So you know, finally she got him off the case and told the other dude he can get on up out of here. And I got another lady, Sarahlene Smith. Okay, and let's just jump in for a second now. When you have these. Um these federal defenders. I mean, you were young at the time, you're 21, 22. So it's not like you had a lot of money to be paying lawyers, especially for a federal case. Because guys, lawyers, it's not like a menu at a restaurant. You know, we don't, we don't all have the same prices. You say, well, lead, how do attorneys come up with their prices? Honestly, guys, tell you the truth, we just make them up. And we just make them up out of our heads. And if you come to me and you look a certain way with certain charges, I'm going to give you one price. But if someone else come to me and they look a certain way with the same charges, they're going to get another price. So many things involve what your price is going to be. And a, a, big, a big factor in your price is going to be your charges. A big factor is going gonna, gonna to be whether it's state or federal but also a factor is going to be if I think you can pay some money. If you walk in in a, in a T-shirt, that's one thing. If you walk in in a three-piece suit, you might get another charge, a different price, a higher price. But typically, a federal case is going to be worth more. You're going to get a higher price than a state case. Where did you try to look, um, little Witty, for any any attorneys, any private attorneys that you could, or you just knew that you weren't you were never going to be able to pay that type of price? Yeah, I didn't have I didn't have no support. I didn't mm. have I didn't even have money to go commissary, so it wasn't even gonna be no it wasn't even, and in the feds you don't even need to pay attorney. You just need to because the public defender, uh the federal defender, they gonna uh they're gonna be better than most paid attorneys. Paid attorneys are snakes they if you ain't got no relationship with them, uh you no know, a good bond with them, you just can't hire any lawyer. True, true. Some of these lawyers out here are gangsters, they'll take your money faster than any street ninja, they really will. They really will. And it's harder to find attorneys who are good at federal law than attorneys that are good at state law. A lot of attorneys are good at state law, but when your case is federal, you got a much smaller pool. But and it was about sorry about, but no, it was about the federal, right? Federal go more out the guidelines. Yes. So it's easy to fight a federal case as long as the feds ain't been investigated. So if the feds adopt a state case, like they pick up a state case, you can beat it. Because mm -hmm. the state, you know, they, they just do anything. But if the feds investigating you, then you know, you might just go ahead and lay down. Well, see, I think you're right. And I think that's what your federal, I think that's what your federal defenders were saying. Because everybody knows that the federal, the prosecutors, they got what, like a 95, 96, 98 conviction rate. So when you say, oh, well, you might as well lay down, it sounds like that's what your attorneys were saying in terms of you cooperating, right? Just no, go on and tell them what you got. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. So if the feds investigate you, what they're gonna do is they're gonna watch you until they got everything they want to get you. The state, if they pick up a state case, basically they're saying, like, okay, Atlanta police. They built a profile on me and gave it to the feds. Like, okay, he's a problem in the community, uh, in Atlanta. So what they did was they finally got a case, and they, they sent it over to the feds. Feds, like, okay, we got a case. And then the feds go from there. But Atlanta police had already broke procedures. Oh. Yeah. So what you're saying is the feds didn't do their investigation in your rec, in your rec case. They got their work up from the state. Is it was an intimidation, right? Mm. So the feds picked up my case thinking that they could scare me into giving them whatever they think I might know. Mm -hmm. But when they got me over there, it was different because I seen that they were trying to intimidate me. So when you try to intimidate me, then you just got to come on with it. Right. And once I noticed that they were trying to scare me, I was like, okay, I, I dropped my nuts. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't tell them the information that they that they wanted to know. Yeah, right. You know gotcha. I mean? So they try to have so many meetings. You know what the prosecutor told me? Hmm. She said when I when I cussed them out, cussed my lawyer out in front of them. She said, okay, Mr. Copeland, contact your attorney when you're ready to cooperate. 
I was like, what? They told me two type of people in the feds. Ones that cooperate and ones that wish they cooperate. I say it's three. Because you got the ones like me too, the ones with the point too. Right. I went back to the jail and that's when I fired him. That was your second attorney. That was the first attorney. The first attorney, gotcha. The gotcha. second attorney, he wasn't getting my case for nothing. It took, okay. me, it took two years for me to fire him. Jesus. Jesus. I was like, so you fired him because you made up that lie about him touching your butt, right? Yeah. So you got him off your case by any means necessary. If it's your life, it's your life. You and, you know, I ain't hold him back. Mm -hmm. I got the transcripts. Like I, I still got the papers at the house where I can show you. I, I told the judge I feel for my life because this is the person who my life is in his hand. Yes. You know what his argument is? Hmm. His argument was justification, uh, public, not public safety, justification. Like he basically was trying to say I had the firearm, but is you crazy? Right. <laughs> he, he trying to say I had it because people was trying to do harm to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm telling him if there was if there was the law and if there was truth, I wouldn't be sitting in jail under this charge. Right. They found possession is nine tenths of the law. They mean it got to be an arm reach. It got to be on my person. Mm -hmm. You ain't have no knowledge that I had this firearm because when the police came down, he saw me. I was playing basketball. Mm. And it was people sitting with this bag. The video showed people was going in the bag and everything. Wow. And it was tampered with, it was skipping. So you can't say if somebody came in the gym and put it in their bag. Because my attention was focused on basketball. Right. And all, all the people that was in the gym, nobody said the police were coming in. Once I looked up, it was 30 police was in the gym. So because the police because the video the video could have showed other people who had access to the bag put the machine gun in. But the video was clipped up and chopped up. It was tampered with, right. and so there was there, you know, there was really no evidence connecting you to that gun because you were on the court playing basketball. This man Woody is a walking movie. How many stories he got? But so the, mm -hmm. the evidence that they had was I had on True Religion shirt and True Religion pants. The nine one one caller described me as a white True Religion shirt and blue True Religion pants. So, and they said I was in the recreation center, but he never said a crime was committed. He mm. just said a person in the gym got a machine gun. I mean, Georgia is an open carry state, but a machine, <laughs> you got a machine gun up in there. But again, it was a bag. So it, it absolutely could have been a setup. Uh, shout out to Woody again. Uh, Puras fires. Puras fires con el teléfono. But that is why, Woody, I am going to gift you my uh, live streaming course. Um, beginners in advance, I'm going to get it to you for free because you absolutely got a story to tell, brother. So I anticipate Woody coming back in about uh, 20 seconds. I'm not sure what's going on with his uh, his cell phone, but guys, when you try to live stream from Wi-Fi and stuff, take it from me. It does not work reliably. You need to get plugged in. You need to get a, a Ethernet connection. So while we wait for Woody to come back, we will. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back. Well, I'm going to pause it right there. But that was Little Woody. That was Little Woody on the lead attorney show. The man is like a walking movie. The man, he got stories to tell, and dealing with the with the with the courts, with the different lawyers, amazing. But I brought this in. Hopefully, you guys like the show. Hopefully, you're entertained. If you like it so far, give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. With that said, let's move on. My name is Noel Battling MS here at Verbal on Life. And I just wanted to bring the little Woody on the on the lead attorney show. With that said, make sure to give this video a like. Verbal or life. Okay, I will.